How's it going, everybody? I am Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy. Special announcement, now available as of today, March 11th, a PGA DFS Occupy model for OccupyFantasy.com members. Our members, our listeners, our viewers, our followers have been requesting a PGA model for some time now. So we spent the last year back testing and researching to develop this analytical and predictive player dashboard for OccupyFantasy.com members. So from now until the final major of the year, this model will be up every single week on OccupyFantasy.com. And as a result, that means every single week here on YouTube, I will be giving out PGA DFS picks, lineup advice, construction strategies for FanDuel, DraftKings, Yahoo. This week, it starts with the Players' Championship down in TPC Sawgrass down in Florida. So if you like what we're doing and you're interested and you want to know about our picks every single week, go ahead and click that subscribe button below. That way you're notified of all of our PGA DFS videos as well as any other videos we do. XFL every single week. MLB here coming around the corner. And uh, give us a thumbs up if you like what we are doing. And if you have questions about anything or if comments, comment below. And we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can, especially before the slate starts at 6 a.m. Eastern on Thursday. So... Uh, if you've been around before, you know that, one, we do these 10-minute videos. Uh, we were doing them back in the NFL season for Showdown. Going to try to keep these PGA videos the same length, about 10 minutes. And also, if you have been an Occupy Fantasy member or you have been watching our videos, you're pretty familiar with the Occupy model. If you don't, let's do a quick intro to what it is. So what it is, it's a live, real-time player dashboard as injuries for other sports, as starting lineups for other sports, as betting odds, definitely for PGA, change. Uh, the Occupy model updates in real time, and it ranks every single player for FanDuel, DraftKings, and Yahoo, but not by your typical projections. We use our proprietary formula, as you see here, called the OF index. It's the second column here uh, from the left. And what it does, based on all of our back testing, all of our research, we looked at, at over 150 different metrics uh, for other sports and for PGA as well. And instead of presenting you with 150 metrics and overloading you with information, we boil all those metrics. First of all, we see which ones are important for a sport, for a DFS sport. And we find out what their predictive value is. And we boil that down into one number each week, the, o the OF index. So this is how a player ranks independent of salary based on his expectations uh, for that week's slate. And again, this is built for tournaments. It's looking at upside and... Uh, it takes a variety of factors into account. So for PGA, there are a lot of different schools of thought, a lot of different data points to test. And ultimately, without giving away too much, what it comes down to is we are taking course-fitted metrics, which means uh, we look at how uh, each course has fared in the past in, in historical events, what have been the most important metrics that replicate success for that course, and then we take a look at other pre-match uh, factors, betting odds, ownership, like I said, over 150 different metrics, how those impact and predict tournament finishes. And that's what this OF index number comes down to every single week. Uh, so the metrics that go into the OF index will change slightly from week to week, but the overall basis remains the same. Uh, so like I said, you'll see that each player ranked by OF index on the entire slate. Obviously have FanDuel, DraftKings, and Yahoo salaries. Uh, and then most importantly, we've been back testing this as well. Our projected ownership, FanDuel, DraftKings, and Yahoo, this FD percentage, DK percentage, Y percentage. And we found that, uh, one, our projected ownership is incredibly spot on, uh, 80 to 90% correlation with the actual ownership. What we also found in PGA DFS is that projected ownership uh, correlates with about 60% of what a player's uh, DraftKings score will be. So heavy influence like I said, it, this happens in NFL as well. We talk about it in our ultimate guide because there is a week uh, to develop thoughts and the best plays and research the best plays in a sport like PGA, in a sport like NFL, in a sport like XFL. Ownership correlates heavily with, uh, with fantasy points because we're smart now. We have the entire internet at our disposal. We have smart people writing and, and talking about PGA DFS. So ownership is going to reflect that. And uh, as a result, we get uh, incredible value from projected ownership. Combine that with the OF index and some lineup construction strategies we'll talk about here in a second, you get uh, um, a, a very predictive 
sort of combination of values for your PGA DFS lineups. Let me scroll up a bit here. You also see our FD, DK, and Y values. These are basically how an OF index compares to a, a player's salary on each site. And then, as always, at Occupy Fantasy, we're very hip to the betting odds and what that means for different players. So we have the odds to win, what a player's odds to win a tournament are, and how that line has moved since it opened, normally Sunday night, Monday morning, sometimes earlier, depending if it's a, it's a major tournament. Um, and these odds are taken from, as you see here, Sugar House Sportsbook in New Jersey, which we have recently partnered with. They are a legal sportsbook in the state of New Jersey. And uh, we, like I said, we have partnered with multiple sportsbooks, not in New Jersey, but Indiana, Iowa as well. And as a result, we have incredible deposit bonuses and free bet offers for new users. So if you are interested, if you live in those states, you're near those states, you're traveling to those states, uh, in the description below, we have a link to where you can get uh, those offers. So if you look at the odds to win, we can sort, the Occupy model is fully sortable. We can sort by who has the best odds to win. So as we see for the Players' Championship, Roy McIlroy, John Rahm, uh, the two favorites here, Roy, uh, pretty significant favorite. And then the line move, we can see which players have seen the biggest increase in their odds, biggest decrease in their odds. Remember, a negative number here is a good thing. So Brendan Todd, who has the biggest line move since uh, these futures opened, he opened at plus 20,000. He's now down to plus 17,500, so a 2,500 point move. Now, 2,500 uh, is, it's, it's, you have to think about this relatively as well, right? A 2,500 point move for a person who's plus 20,000 may not be as big as a 100 point move for a guy who's plus 500, right? So it's a percentage of, uh, of their future. So, but again, you can see where the betting market's moving, combine them with some of these other factors, you can get a good uh, indication with uh, who a good play will be based on the betting markets in the OF index. And on the flip side, guys who have seen the opposite move, their their odds to, to win have decreased based on the betting markets. So have that as well. All right, so for this particular slate, the uh, Players' Championship, FanDuel, DraftKings, Yahoo, our number one play in our model is Jim Furyk. And... Uh, that may seem crazy because he's only 6,800 on DraftKings and his projected ownership is just 8% on FanDuel, 3% on DraftKings. Uh, but for one, first of all, Furyk pops in our model a lot of weeks. You know, like I said, we've back tested this and we were keeping track of it throughout the last year. And Furyk always pops, especially on these courses like this where uh, driving accuracy, uh, your approach shots, getting on the green is very important. And, uh, Although, shout out to our, our member, uh, Niramata, who is in our Discord channel and educating everyone on PGA. He's a very, very good PGA DFS player. Uh, he pointed out in our Discord this week that the Players' Championship was moved up a couple months. And as a result, we'll see some changes in how the ball uh, reacts on, on the fairways, on the greens. And uh, we could see an increase in bombers, guys who hit the ball far off the tee. Uh, have more success, whereas in the past, this course particularly has had success for guys who are very accurate, not necessarily can hit the ball very far, but they can get it on the fairway, get it on the green. Uh, their greens in regulation percentage is very high. So uh, that's the reason why Jim Furyk uh, leads the model this week, very likely to make the cut, finished second in this event last year, and uh, uh, our model loves him a lot. And at 3% ownership on DraftKings, 8% on FanDuel, an excellent tournament play or high-risk play. Uh, and then you see Roy McIlroy right behind him, high ownership, odds to win, should be a staple of your lineups. As an experienced, as an experienced elite player, uh, the best odds to win, second highest OF index, high ownership, uh, and has finished top five in like his last eight events. Just insane, insane recent form for Roy McIlroy. So we have this Occupy model. Uh, we see it likes Jim Furyk, it likes Roy McIlroy, it likes... Terrell Hatton, who, Terrell Hatton, again, I don't play PGA, I don't watch PGA, uh, and that could be the said for a couple of our sports. Moose, our chief data officer, doesn't watch some of these sports, but we know the data and what predicts fantasy value. And uh, this is a great example. Hatton, last week, we gave a test run to our members in our Discord channel of the Occupy model. Hatton was ranked number one last week. Hatton won the tournament. So uh, a good start for the 2020 uh, PGA model. Uh, so hat number three this week. Connors number four. It just he's another low own type play. It can't lay rounds it rounds out our top five 
um, as a, a, a relatively, you know, a, a favorite and uh, one, one should be one of the highest owned guys this week. So you're saying, all right, Brian, what do I do with this information as we approach the 10 minute mark with this video? Now, there are uh, two ways to approach PGA DFS as there are most sports, low risk contests, high risk contests. For low risk contests, it's simple. Look at guys who rank high as far as OF index goes and projected ownership. Remember we said projected ownership is very uh, predictive of a player's fantasy scoring. And you don't want a high owned guy not in your lineup that makes the cut, goes off, you don't have him, uh, that can really sink your chances in your low risk contest. So take a look at who the highest owned players are on DraftKings, look at their OF index, same with FanDuel, Yahoo, and guys who are high owned and have a high, own, high OF index, maximize that in your low risk lineups, you'll find great success. It's that simple, honestly it is. Now for high risk contests, it gets trickier. In addition to researching what goes into a player's performance, we have also researched lineup constructions, the optimal lineup construction. And that'll change obviously from tournament to tournament based on who's in the field, uh, what the tournament, what the course is. But an overall theme that we've seen in high risk PGA contests, especially for majors, especially for majors as pricing changes, as more casual players enter the field uh, and the players championship counts as a major, the, the, the quote unquote fifth major. So what you want to do this is very important for your high risk contest using the model. How do you optimally use it? What you want primarily, there, there are two main, three main things. Eh, there are four main things uh, that we found in our lineup construction research. Number one, you want at least two guys that are 15% ownership or higher in your lineup. Uh, again, like we said, these, this ownership is pretty good at predicting player value. If you have all guys less than 15%, it likely means you're playing some bad plays. So you want at least two guys, and probably just two, uh, maybe three, but, but definitely two guys, 15% ownership. So if we sort by DraftKings, these guys here, Bryson, Roy, Morikawa, Webb Simpson, Matsuyama, Rom, Cantley, M, Thomas, Leishman, and then you can drop it down a little bit too. But you want at least two guys from this group in your lineup, lineups, period. On the flip side, you want also two guys that are less than 5% ownership to kind of balance it out, right? So if we sort the other way, obviously this is, it's actually a sort by OF index. We'll see guys like Furyk, Connors, Harris English, Henley, Aaron Wise, Cauley, Watney, Knox, Tringle, and it goes down the list. So combine those two 15% plus guys, add in two guys that are less than 5%, and then for the final two spots, fill in guys who are between 5 and 15, right? Uh, and that is the optimal line of construction, especially for these big tournaments, especially for your leagues, your satellites, uh, and especially in these major contests. Seems simple, but that has been the case. What we looked at is what the top 0.1% of finishers have done compared to what the field does. And in those metrics, the top 0.1% top of finishers uh, completely dominate the field in that type of line of construction. It's a good thing. Um, what else? 7K guys on DraftKings, if we sort by salary here. You don't want three or more guys in the 7K range. So pick your two favorites. You can go down to one, you can go zero, but having more than two is detrimental to your lineup. Variety of reasons for that. Uh, but um, yeah, 7,100 to 7,900 max out at two guys from that player group. And then finally, guys in the 6K range. Um, if we look last year, I'm going to pull this up on my end. Last year's 2019 Players Championship, uh, the field doubled, sorry, the top 0.1% doubled what the field did in number of 6K players. You want probably two 6K guys in your lineup for a major tournament like this because of the pricing, we're able to fit guys in. Um, so from this 60, 6K to 6,900 range, in your high risk lineups, you'll want two players probably. At least that is what, and not just this tournament, but in other tournaments um, over the course of the past year, that is what lineup construction has told us. So to recap, let's get back up here. Two 15% or higher owned guys, two 5% or less owned guys, uh, two guys in the middle. Uh, no more than two 7K players. You probably want two 6K players, and I think that rounds it out from a line of construction standpoint. So you can know nothing about golf. 
uh, have a, a decent set of ownership, which we have, have a decent uh, pre predictor of success, the OF index, that's what we have, and use those lineup construction advice for low risk and then and then high risk as well, and have a, a very good chance of cashing your lineups uh, come Sunday. So that'll do it for this video. Again, you can check this model out. And again, it's going to update from the time this video, from the time you watch this video, uh, until the tournament starts based on betting odds and some other factors. So it's going to keep updating. So you want the latest uh, projections, the latest ownership projections, the latest OF index, OccupyFantasy.com for members only. Remember, you get access to all sports, now seven sports for as low as $6 per week. Uh, again, in the description below, we have the links to Sugar House and our other uh, partnered sports books where you can get deposit bonuses and free bets for new users. And again, if you like what we do here, Click that subscribe button. You'll get our videos directly to your feed whenever we release them. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. So I am Brian Jester, uh, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy. Follow me at Brian Jester FF. Follow us at Occupy Fantasy on Twitter. Again, really excited for PGA. We're going to have these videos weekly in addition to our other great weekly videos that we have. So that'll do it. Good luck this week in PGA. I hope one of you take home the million. Good luck.